Super Material Theater, the biggest craze and next step in the evolution of immersive live performance. It uses a highly advanced theater material system to take a simple stage show and transform it into an IMAX experience with digitized settings and props. Saria is infatuated from her first experience and sets her heart on becoming an actress on stage. Despite some pushback from her close friend, she is approached by a hobbling lady to audition in a lesser known theater troupe. Here she meets Irie, the troupe leader, who is impressed by Saria's ability to remember lines and moves after seeing them once. She's welcome aboard, but the troupe needs money, so they do some stuff like practice as idols to garner attention. When Saria expresses to the others that she's inspired by SMT, Irie gets pissed immediately, followed by Saria learning that Irie used to be close with the actress Saria looked up to before she left Allison Theatre to join SMT. Not only this, but we're told that SMT actually stole the theatre technology from Allison Theatre in the first place, which yeah, now makes sense why Irie might be touchy about this one since now they're scrounging for money like street performers. It still feels like a standard idol show up to this point. We can imagine and Alice in theater garnering attention as they strive to work together and get closer, but this is hardly the most interesting part of Gek Idol. It's a relatively confusing story. The character designs are okay, although not that memorable. The concept is alright, but where it really starts to go somewhere is the greater plot at hand and undertones it constantly slips in. Everything is not okay in the world of material theater. There are a lot of uncomfortable scenes that imply some very dark shit is happening. First and most notably, a giant disaster five years ago where a big electromagnetic field speared away an entire area of the city has left an enormous scar in the form of an exclusion zone where said field still appears to linger. Nobody knows where it came from, but people, including what is hinted to be Saria's sister, are dead. The power in the city is shown to fluctuate quite often, and people don't really know what to do about it, or how it actually works at all. I get the impression we're viewing the world through the eyes of Saria, where things are hopeful, naive, but still taunted by the nightmares in the back of her head. But outside her view, we get hints that people are struggling. Their manager can't pay the electricity bill for the building, and the girls spread rumors that she's sleeping with the landlord, which doesn't seem far off since the lady apparently sleeps in her office and is quite partial to alcohol. There's also some creepy guy that watches the performers from behind the eyes of this robot girl. Something very wrong is happening here, and there's some kind of big mystery unfolding beneath the surface, but make no mistake, the majority of the show is about the cute little girl training to be an actress and figuring stuff out with the group. Part of my enjoyment is speculative. On the one hand, I do really like the emotional tones and uneasiness it feels it's deliberately forcing into me when I watch. I come in expecting this to be about the acting, and there is this omnipresent sense of tension in this world. It's unshakable. On the other hand, I fear the show doesn't know where it really wants to go with this. If it builds on something ultimately unique and impactful, great but I worry it's equally possible that I'm being made to feel this unease with no payoff. What if I'm reading too far into it and the show just doesn't know what tones it wants to set, like it's an accident? Or worse yet, what if the payoff is there but it sucks shit? It's hard to say only after watching two episodes, but this might be one to keep an eye on, especially if you want a weird take on typical idol stuff, because this is certainly not typical regardless of outcome.